welcome to Beyond the Plinth, a show about everything to do with biokinetics, health and wellness. I'm your host, Steve Saunders, and today I've got one half of the tripartite crew missing. So we have... I'm Wendy for Mark. I'm the marketing director for Barca. And I'm Masana Ndlovo, intern biokineticist at Natasha Dili, biokineticist and Chanel Dupino, biokineticist. Brilliant. I'm Devin Kerr. Um, I'm an intern biokineticist at Adjustability. Brilliant. So as you can hear, we have two guests in here. And Wendy, today is all about the newbies. That's right. The, 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 the initiates. Um, what are the terms I can throw at this that you don't put to them because you call them interns? Um, they about their final phases of experience and getting into the, the profession of biokinetics. Um, and we've got some great... Great content to talk about with them as well today. Yeah, I mean, this is a specific crew now. We're coming out of COVID from online learning, um, online shadowing as such of patients. And now they're on the ground. They're seeing patients one-on-one, in face, person to person. And yeah, just quite an exciting time. How are you guys finding your internship at the moment? Well, different. Different from what I anticipated from beginning of the year and last year. Because, like you said, coming out of COVID, um, being online, although we did have some practical sessions at university, it's completely different to what you do in your internship year. So it's like you have to put everything that you know, theory, into practice. Mm -hmm. And mind you me, keeping in mind that every patient is different. You might do this for a particular patient. It's not going to work for the next patient. Mm -hmm. And how do you learn that? By doing it. And who tells you that it was wrong? Your wonderful yeah. intern supervisors. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got someone watching over your shoulder all the time. Literally, eh? literally. That nervousness that comes through. Am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? It, exactly. But as, as time goes on, you, you, you feel more comfortable with your supervisor and you engage with them. And, and you know, you just have that conversations around this is what um, you would rather do instead of this. So you always have someone guiding you. It's not like you're being thrown in the deep end throughout the year. Yes, because um, real life is always very different to educational theory. Definitely. I mean, you know, what's nice about our degree, of course, is that there's so much practical within it, you know, so that it's trying to equip you to get into that workforce with a certain amount of equipping. But uh, this is where the internship sort of now blurs the line from student academia to actual non-textbook practice. Yes. And your expectations, Devin, how have you found that? Um, yeah, it's been an interesting experience. Definitely coming out of COVID, obviously, I think it affected everyone. So obviously at Varsity, you learn all your theoretical knowledge and stuff. And then as you get into the practice, you learn how to apply that knowledge and to deal with different patients um, in different, yeah, I mean, obviously with their own uh, specific conditions. So that's definitely been a challenge. Um, I think also the interaction with the patients um, is a bit different as well. Also, I think... Our patients themselves have also adjusted in a way. Mm. Obviously, a lot of them also went into the online sort of treatment protocol as well. Um, so I think that's also changed the way that they look on therapy. So, yeah. I think we're going to have to delve into that as a little topic. I've got a question to ask you both before. What motivated you to get into biokinetics and to become or want to become a biokineticist? So I completed my undergraduate degree at the Northwest University. Um, so I studied human movement sciences. Brilliant. So in that degree, we did a lot of anatomy and basically physiology. And I thought to myself, this is something I want to try out. And mind you, me at that time, I was doing my second year. I didn't even know there was something like biokinetics. I only found out in my third year. Um, yeah, so I progressed to my third year. Uh, and then my head of department um, let us know that, guys, um, we have a degree, biokinetics, and you guys can qualify to become biokineticist. So should you complete this degree, which is your human movement science, you can qualify to do your honours in biokinetics. Did my research up on it. Um, I love exercise. <laughs> I am a physical person. Mm. Uh, and I love playing netball. So I, when I did my research, I was like, this is where I want to go. Brilliant. And you, David? Um, so my story is a little bit different. I knew from quite young that I wanted to be involved in rehabilitation. Uh, we had a family friend who was in a very big car accident um, and then she 
uh, had a very long rehabilitation uh, path. Um, so I think uh, from that young age, I was exposed to it. Um, and that's something that, uh, that definitely put me on that path. Um, so yeah, at Varsity, well, before Varsity, I started to do some job shadowing and stuff between physios and bios. Um, I realized, yeah, biotinitis is the path I definitely want to take. And then, yeah, that's why I ended up studying the profession. And that's also the main reason or a big reason why I wanted to be at my practice where I'm at now is because we do have a very strong focus on neurological rehabilitation as well. Brilliant. And the background in exercise, obviously, strong for both of you. Yes, yes, definitely. definitely. Okay, so netball, your favorite sport. Are you still playing? No, no. Not, she doesn't have back. time. She's an intern. <laughs> She's <working. laughs> I'm like, up at like six, I come home like Has late. Has Natasha so. not put up a little netball hoop for you? You can practice a few shots. And uh, I'll, 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 I'll talk to her about it. On the back of the door. Okay? <laughs> Get one of those little ones on the office desk. <laughs> yeah. <out> there. <laughs> in between writing reports and working out everything you know? else for the... Uh, yeah, I think the you overseer, just, hey? Supervisor. The supervisor. overseer. Just no, as to you, them, it's the overseer. Yeah. <laughs> to you, it's yeah, the supervisor. supervisor. <laughs> the, the more positive term. Just as you mentioned about writing reports, um, if I think even back to my internship, that was the one thing I wasn't prepared for. I was really excited to see patients and get on the ground and put all my knowledge to test now, you know, like, oh, you have a knee. I know exactly how to treat a knee. And then I was like, oh, this person isn't a knee. It's a person. <laughs> and it's not a knee. It's a person that has a whole holistic issue. And they are not a textbook. And now I also have to do all the admin. And that was the big wake up call for me it was all the admin. So you know, being a medical professional certainly ups the ante there. So, so give me your pathway then from undergrad into honours, the difference between that experience. I mean, undergrad, to me, I've done an undergrad. I thought it was great. I had a huge amount of fun. I never did anything that required honours or anything that required stats. So you guys have gone up into that level now. Give me give me a breakdown of the difference in the approach for both of those. Obviously, you're getting more and more specific as you go. So like I mentioned, um, with my undergraduate degree, it was more um, anatomy, physiology. That was undergrad. Fast forward to honours, it's like, boom, you need to know this and this and this and this. And it's something they don't touch on. It's just, okay, guys, you need to know what this does, what this does, what this yeah, does. Yeah, it's an expected exactly. thing. And then we move straight into something like special tests. And you're like, what? Can we just like tone it down a bit? But yeah, with, with you know, with dedication and hard work, you go through it on your own so that you, you can better yourself in the profession so that when you go into your internship, yeah, you don't go in there blank and you're like, what's happening? And you've actually, you've actually learned how to learn. Exactly. So what happens mm. undergrad is they're typically teaching you, whereas when you go to honours, you're going to be expected to learn. So you're developing, all they're doing is helping you with that final project that final exactly process of can your brain can your systems work to be able to give an outcome an answer an honest based on all the education you got um prognosis whatever it is that's, yeah. that's going to be needed that's there. actually one of the key factors of being a biokineticist is are you able to do clinical reasoning so it's not do you know what range to move xyz joint with xyz injury or whatever it is it's can you use clinical reasoning to decide what is right for that patient? And, and as I Wendy think, says that, the interns are nodding their heads because <laughs> we can all see that on camera. Yeah. <laughs> Massive agreement, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they but can yeah. tell you the supervisor is as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, so this process of, because you've gone through a very strange time. You've gone through the whole COVID time, the, the lockdowns and the rules changing and things flipping upside down and not sure if you're going to have a lecture or you're not going to have a lecture or it's online, it's not online. That experience for you guys, knowing there's a lot of biokineticists that are listening to the show that didn't go through that experience in their education side, how do you think that's affected you guys and made you better or you may have been a bit limited by that experience in preparation for becoming a professional in the biokinetics field? Um, yeah, I definitely think there's a there's pros and cons to it, to be honest with you. Um, I think the previous people, they they got that experience of working with people throughout the, the whole studies, uh, whereas we had you know two years where we were sort of limited um, to that human interaction. Um, however, at the same time, I think we also almost have a benefit because 
um, especially we the younger sort of generation. Um, we are a lot You're more calling us exposed. Old. Yeah, <laughs> just, just be careful. Your super, I know it's not your supervisor, but this is a supervisor, supervisor. Yeah. yeah. So a lot uh, more exposed um, and I think comfortable as well with um, online and technology and stuff. And I think, um, yeah, there is definitely some pros and cons to that, that situation. <laughs> Devin, you've just hit the, the nail on the head. My blessed intern, thankfully, has taught me so much <laughs> in terms of how to use my <laughs> computer and billing system now because, yeah, yay for the millennials or whatever, Jen, whatever. What call you guys, yeah. Are you yeah. millennials? No. You're younger than that, aren't you? Oh, my Lord. I know. <laughs> <laughs> We've got babies in the studio, babies. <laughs> so so t- just taking that, that, that experience, th- what did it do to the psychology for you guys individually when these rules shifted, the goalposts shifted, the level of how you're going to achieve things, they shifted? How did that affect you in your process of trying to get that um, – yeah, you know, you've got a goal in mind. You've got an outcome you're wanting to achieve, and it's what you'd been sold as part of the process. I say sold because there's a bit of marketing that goes behind any sort of course. And then when COVID kicked, it changed all of it. It's about a person. As it's I said, it's person. not treating a knee, it's treating a person. And and through a screen, it's pretty difficult mm. to treat a person because the person is not just the physical. It's the psychological. It's the mental. It's the emotional. It's a spiritual. And uh, as a biokineticist, you guys are very well trained. And when I say trained, it seems that you, you probably naturally fall into the scope of people who have a high level of empathy. You can deal with someone on an emotional level without necessarily getting emotional. So you can, you can sort of read someone there. But how did this whole COVID and lockdown and the change in the rules change your psychology and your approach to this game? Okay. So with with my experience so it it went both ways there are pros and cons obviously during covid when we were doing our clinical rotations there were some patients who were like i don't know what these people are around me i don't know who they are and uh, obviously there will be your special populations and people who have chronic diseases but there were also people who wanted others like as interns or students to learn from what they went through. Yes. So just to add, like we went to adjustability for our clinical rotations and there's this um, one patient who was in a car accident and he always wanted us as students to be like, I need you guys mm. to help me, To I need you guys to know what is wrong with me so that I, you guys can help others because there are people who do not have access to this mm. at all. People don't even know biokinetics as a whole. So, like I said, it's it, it was good, it was bad. Some people, not so much. And it, I feel like in a certain field, I didn't get as much experience, like special populations, because we couldn't go there in our clinical rotations because old people are more prone to COVID and they didn't want a lot of people around them. So, yeah, there were certain fields that we feel, I feel that I didn't get enough experience, but most of the fields, I got more than enough experience. And was there a positive side to this whole um, flipping of the the experience? Yes, there was. So like Dev added, um, because we're so good with technology. Now, <laughs> YouTube was blowing up with like um, videos of how to assess a patient, how to go on assessments, how to go on with a knee patient and, and all of those things. So, yeah, so that is the positive um, upside to it that we had. Um, something that we can always refer back to as opposed to a lecturer teaching it in class and you can't exactly refer back to it. Mm. Brilliant. So explain for me now the process of internship from the perspective of the intern, not from the perspective of the intern. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So, Devin. Go for it. The um, process so of internship. The process what? of internship is, um, so how I would understand or how I have treated my years, just to basically almost like act like a sponge and just really absorb as much information um, as you can. I'm very lucky to be at the practice where I'm at because we have many bios. So I'm not just learning from like my one supervisor. I'm learning from a number of um, different people. And obviously with that, everyone has their own um, methods of treatment. They all have their own areas where they're particularly strong. So, yeah, it's really been really awesome just to yeah take a little bit of um, information from everyone and, yeah, just combine that and learn about that. Um, and, yeah, just really try to learn as much as possible. Yeah, 
there's not really much I can add to what Dev said. <laughs> um, so yeah, internship is a year, 12 months. And then you get two assessments that you do, your mid-year assessment and your end of the year assessment that our lovely supervisors <laughs> do for us. <laughs> and they assess um, it's our, our inter- favorite <laughs> times of year, favorite. <laughs> so um, we're being assessed based on patient interaction, um, our knowledge of the condition and just how you go about the entire assessment um, throughout the whole year. And how tough are these supervisors? I've heard lots about them and... Um Oh, pray tell. I can't wait. <laughs> well, mine are lovely. So. <laughs> yeah, I can't say anything wrong about mine. <laughs> okay, so, so I'm going to lead that on to another question then. The most influential bios, biokineticists, in your experience so far? Ooh, sure, names. that's a tough one. <laughs> you can drop names or you can leave the names out and you can talk about who they are and what they do doesn't have to be a name if you want, but um, it is always interesting to hear. And you've already mentioned a bunch of names of people that I've seen as influential in the market. But for you guys, as people going into this game, completing your internship, you've been influenced by those people in a positive way. Who are they? Why did they influence you? Um, So for me, I would say definitely um, Justin. Uh, who's my supervisor at Adjustability. He's really been incredible. Is that he, when he's not riding a bicycle? When he's not riding a bicycle, <laughs> or yeah. The or in the mud. Or in the mud or yeah, so VW comedy. Bio is actually his uh, side job. He's a professional athlete. But <laughs> 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 um, no, but he, he really is a, yeah, he's um, super intelligent and smart when obviously it comes to the profession. But his uh, patient interaction and like his empathy towards the patient is also... Um, just brilliant. And I don't think that's that's not something that you can learn as a buyer. I think that comes um, as like the type of person that you are. So yeah, that's been really, really cool. So Justin Jeffrey, huh? Justin Jeffrey, yeah. <laughs> sure, we won't tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one, okay. So I'm also going to nominate my supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless. <laughs> um, obviously scored well at mid <laughs> 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 which is Natasha as well as Shinaldi. So doing a split internship, you see different things because the two different practices do things differently. Yes. Um, yeah. So with, with, with Tash, she, I remember, we, so every Tuesday we do some like educational stuff. And I remember she did something. She was like, this is how you release a patient's neck. I was like, that is genius <laughs> how, how do you do that you know so um yeah so um learning from her like her her experience is, is is phenomenal and having these two people who've been in the industry for such a long time obviously they've learned so many things that i that i am still to learn did you just call them old yes <laughs> again well well yes. to be fair yes wendy did complete her internship in 2002 oh, thank you very so. much <laughs> <laughs> and just do to put the date in now that's 2022 now yes. do you understand 20 years of uh, awesome experience <laughs> do you understand <laughs> but also to add Wendy as well so I've never been to Wendy's practice but um, I know she works with special populations I wanted to rotate at her practice but because of COVID she (laughs) didn't allow us to come there but yeah I know her practice it's it's, it's one of the best when it comes to special populations and older people so also her in my nomination here we go (laughs) I just want to give a a little bit of a a shout out to to this young you know crew coming up and just how they've handled this transition they've they've handled it I think considerably better than a number of us buyers on the ground you know, because we've had to switch from our old ways, you know, whereas you guys have just like slotted in with it really, really well. And it's been really beneficial to our practices. And one of the key things, I know you guys are talking a lot about, you know, equipping how to see patients. Your four years at university does most of that job. We pick it up. But actually, as a supervisor, our main job is to actually equip you to open your own practices. That's the actual main drive it's to supervise that you are doing things ethically that you know how to bill ethically um how to run a diary how to practice manage as opposed to just treating the knee or getting someone in a return to work or scenario you know so 
um, you didn't even mention it, but you're picking up all of this experience to one day blossom and grow and open your own practices and then 20 years down the line have whatever that uh, podcast type thing is. And, you know, you'll be equipping and growing the next generation. That's what we want. We want the profession to grow and expand and but grow well. And that's what the internship is for, is to grow and equip our buyers well. So on that one, the question I have for you next is, <clears throat> where do you see yourselves in 20 years' time? It'll be 2042. Wow. <laughs> 2042, where are you guys going to be? What's your objective? Where do you see yourselves going? Where, what's your next step outside of internship? Where are you going to practice? Um, what are your goals? What are your big ambitions? Okay, I'll go first. Um, you can go first or second or third. <laughs> so um, I would like to open a practice back home. So I, I come from two different backgrounds. My dad is Zulu. My mom is Tsonga. Tsonga in Limpopo, Guiani. When I say people have no idea what biokinetics is, it's like when people ask me what I do for a living, like their face goes blank. <laughs> it's like, what is that? You can send them this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. So I'm um, definitely to go the profession back home. Oh, wow. Because there are a lot of people who go to a medical doctor because they have a certain condition and he will just overload them with painkillers. It will help for a certain amount of time. After that, it no longer works. Yeah. And I've seen that with my own grandmother. So she has arthritis. Ever since I've been in this profession, I do a lot of stuff with her. And if I can tell you, she can walk without her crutches now. It's amazing awesome. what movement can do. Yeah. Exactly. So, And she was like on painkillers or like for as long as I can remember because my grandma is really old. So, but, but, but now she's doing much better. She doesn't need the painkillers anymore. She's no longer in that chronic pain. And that's what people don't know that biokinetics can do that for you. You don't need to run to the first surgeon to get this and this and this fix you just need to move your body isn't that so true mm. yeah, you're across the field everywhere and that's exactly <laughs> where biokinetics is falling so you've got exactly. the ability with that medical background training exactly. understanding plus what movement can do for a person exactly. that the world is typically saying to people go buy that tablet it'll sort out all your troubles exactly. and then pop the one tablet and it doesn't and it so doesn't. you pop another tablet because that first one didn't work and the second one made and work. And treat the side effects of that first tablet. tablet. Yeah, and then get another <laughs> tablet for that one and then, yeah, then you end up with all. And this is where a lot of people sit is they don't know that some basic movements and it's, it's the lifestyles we live. So amazing to be able to take that back to those areas where mm. there's a lot of, um, how do I term this, infrastructural neglect in those areas yes. as well. And I'm sure you can add a huge amount of value to those environments. Definitely. So that's the plan. Take it back home, grow the profession back home. So we're going to do a podcast in 2042. Awesome. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in a special population. <laughs> I don't think I'll be here anymore. <laughs> no, you'll be here. You'll come see me for your bag. Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> in spirit. <laughs> Yeah, I think my my goal for 20 years or where I see myself in 20 years would definitely be um, in my own practice. Um, I think that's the objective for all buyers to start out. And yeah, just to really be making a difference um, in people's lives, obviously. Like I said, I've got a huge interest in uh, neurological neurological side of uh, bio. And I think it's um, a side of bio that's not really big at all. Um, and I think a lot of um, the yet. population... Yeah, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> And I think um, your general population, they don't really know that there's these benefits um, of bio on the, on the neurological side. Um, so that's something that I would definitely like to explore and grow um, and really yeah, just get people, get them moving, get them healthy and yeah, just really make their activities of daily living better, easier and make yeah, their lives, yeah, like I said, make their lives easier. And you're also going to have some VW combis from 1970. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. So I think I'll leave those in the garage. <laughs> Okie dokie. I think that about wraps it up. Very interesting discussion and uh, great energy and uh, insights as well as to where I think the world's going to be going with young people like this. Mm. So I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. And they're not prepared for this, for those of you listening. <laughs> I want your elevator pitch, who you are, and sell your services to us within 20 seconds. Go. My name is Masan Androvo, intern biokineticist, your favorite biokineticist in 20 years. Come to me, I'll fix your back, knee, shoulder, anything you can think of. I'm your girl. 
Yo. Whoa. Whoa. That's good. That's good. Okay, Devin, now you got something to live <laughs> Yeah, I'm Devin, biokineticist. Got a huge interest in your neurological patients and, yeah, really making lives um, easier, making lives better, and, yeah, just bringing smiles to people who need them. And there we go. Wendy for Mark. Thanks Supervisor for extraordinaire. <laughs> what do you think of these two? I think they're great. I think I have to have a little chat with Tash and Aldi and Justin. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thanks thank so much for having, having us. us. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much for joining us. So there we go, folks. Wrapping it up. You got any questions, queries, issues, whatever it is, drop them down underneath and uh, we'll try to get back to you as best we can. You can shoot the questions at the interns if you want. You can shoot it at Wendy. You can shoot it at me if you don't mind. Till the next time, have a great day. This podcast was produced by Johan Turon and the team at Soundpatch Studio, presented by yours truly, Steve Saunders. Interested in doing a podcast, drop us a message on soundpatch at me.com. That's soundpatch at me.com. As always, thanks for listening and catch you on the next podcast.